Hi everyone, I'm Scott from Sharky's Greenhouses. Uh, we're here in beautiful little town of uh, Krivitz, Wisconsin, so the far northern part of the state. And uh, uh, we're glad that you're joining us. Let us know that you're watching. Say hi, say hello. Uh, just give us a, uh, something that we know that, that you're watching. And today we're going to be talking about soil. And if you've been watching for any time, you know that I'm very passionate about soil. I'm very finicky about soil because it it starts and ends here. If if uh, if you get this part of, of growing flowers wrong, you can't move on. And uh, we've been doing this for a long, long time as professional growers. And, and we know this subject inside and out. And I, you know, if, if someone walks up to me or they message us or uh, email and say, hey, I'm having problems with this, guaranteed, my first question is going to be, what kind of soil are you using? Because I can cure 90% of the problems right then with that question. So um, soil is extremely important and uh, it, it should be important to you too. And if you want to have beautiful plants and flowers, we have to start with this foundation. That's why it's the first thing that I ask when, when somebody's having trouble. And, and I, probably thousands upon thousands of people, we've got to go from having a terrible uh, time growing their plants and flowers to, to once they learn this, growing awesome flowers that their neighbors are like, oh my goodness, what are you doing, Edna? You know, your flowers just look beautiful. And uh, most of the time it's getting these three basic principles that we start with, that we talk about all the time, good soil, good habits, good care, uh, and then good fertilizing. So we talk about that all the time and, and in that order. So that's why we're going back to the basics today and we're talking about soil. You have to get this right before you can move on. And let us know, you know, is this something that has tripped you up in the past and once you got this right? Because I know thousands of you have and you've let me know. So go ahead, comment down below that, yeah, you know what, once I got stopped buying that garbage at the big box retailers and started using some good soil, uh, y y you'll have, you'll have a, a good year. So we're talking a little bit about uh, soil today, a lot about soil. So go ahead, comment down below, let us know if you've had trouble, but also just, just, uh, let, let's just play this. Uh, what is your, what is your experience with gardening and growing flowers? What's your level? You know, uh, a green thumb wise. So do you have a green thumb? Um, or are you just, uh, just starting, just beginning? Are you a novice? And, and you know what? That's great because everybody has to start at, at, you know, the, the very start of the, uh, of the starting line. Everybody has to start there, including us. You know, we did not walk into a greenhouse and just automatically know how to grow hundreds and hundreds of thousands of flowers. It takes work, it takes learning, and that's why we are so happy that we can um, partner up with you and that, that hopefully you'll like these videos and uh, share them with your friends because everybody starts fresh. Uh, that's, that's just how it works with, with gardening and growing. It comes with experience. Nobody is born with a green thumb. So if, if you're a novice, let us know. There's no shame in being a novice. I was a novice too. And now it's taken 17 years doing this at a professional level that, uh, and Amy and I, that we've, we've grown and learned a lot of things. And most of it, we learned the hard way. We, we learned from that didn't work. And uh, uh, so we learned some hard lessons. And right here, this is the number one lesson that we have to start with. This is the foundation. So we're talking about soil, good quality soil. You'll hear me talk, talk about that too. I'm blue in the face. So what is good quality soil? It's not when you're walking into the big box retailers and those pallets that they pile up in the spring, walk right past it. I, I almost started talking to, we were at Sam's Club the other day and this couple was, you know, grabbing those junk soil from a pallet that they, that they pulled into Sam's Club and I'm like, just don't, don't even do it. Just walk away. That stuff is garbage. 
You, you have to get good quality soil and you're not going to get it at the big box retailers. So, and I know a lot of you are going to ask, well, what is that? We'll, we'll get into that. So good quality soil. We're looking for a, a good base. that's probably got a lot of peat uh, moss in it. Most of those soils will have about half uh, of uh, the content will be peat. Peat is that moisture control. All right. I, I'm, absolutely against moisture control soils and that's probably a whole nother subject for another day and uh, really it's 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 a gimmick it doesn't work stay away from that moisture control you want something with peat moss peat moss is your good moisture control and uh, those little those little pellets that they put in that's that they uh it, it's really it's the same thing that they put in a diaper stay away from that stay away from those uh moisture control soils because that's what they put in and their little uh, cells that, that draw in moisture and then they, they draw that moisture in, but they don't give it back. And so that's the problem with those moisture control soils is they don't give back the, to the plant to, to what it needs. And uh, so uh, uh, skip the moisture control soils. So I, I've got a couple of uh, the soils that we do use in our greenhouses. And just as a disclaimer, uh, you, if you're asking where you can find it, uh, I put a link in the description of this video and uh, you can go to our beatyourneighbor.com website and some of these soils will be there. So yes, you can find that. Of course, go to your local greenhouse, go to your the local guys and gals that are actually growing for a living, not just reselling, not the ones that just pop up, the greenhouses that pop up and they're you know here today and gone tomorrow. I'm talking about the 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 people that are actually doing this for a living and growing. Uh, talk to them, ask them what they're using for soil, and check out what they're using. We like Jolly Gardener. Uh, that's mainly what we use in our greenhouses. Jolly Gardener is a good quality soil, but you can also find uh, Sun Girl. Sun Girl is a is a pretty good quality soil and um i'm gonna just show this it's this 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 is just an all-purpose and it's uh it's pretty chunky um it, it, it's 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 pretty it, it's got a lot of big hunks in it uh i would probably mix it I, I like a little bit finer of a mix personally that's just my personal preference but but the sun grow is is still a pretty decent soil another one that we took a look at last year was glee and um, glee is mostly hydrofiber and hydrofiber is probably a subject that we're going to be talking about tomorrow uh, because it's it's a big change that's coming in the soil industry or it's it's not coming it's here uh, th so this is what the glee soil looks like it's mostly hydrofiber which is a it's a wood product and um, you know they've they've been trying to come up with a solution uh, to replace peat moss because peat moss is not a renewable resource. And so, and a lot of that comes out of Canada. And I, I, to my knowledge, there's millions of acres of peat moss, but they don't want to just keep using it up in the soils because it's it's not not renewable. So uh, they had to have something to, um, to replace that. So Glee actually has a lot of <clears throat> hydrofiber in it. And, and most of the soils do now. And that's like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. And but Glee is it's a totally different type of soil. It's it's really light. And so you, what they do is they compress it and they put it into this bag. So it's it's kind of it's almost like a brick and you really have to uh, break it down. And um, honestly, I would again, I would take this and I would probably mix it because this is so light and the uh, sun gold. The sun gold is is so heavy and coarse. I would probably mix the two together. So it's no problem. You can go through and and mix your soils together, and you know I would probably do that and mix mix it up. And in fact, what I like, um, Jolly Gardener, uh, what we do with our mixing our soil mixing machine, I go through and it can fit about four or five bags. And what I'll do is use about four bags of the regular mix here. And then I'll put a bag of germinating mix, and that's just a nice um, light and airy, and it really helps lighten that up. So even I will mix up my own um, my own batch of soil when we're using, um, and, and it might be a little bit different whether it's for hanging baskets or if it's for pots or if it's for bedding plants. You know, the the soil that's going into the 
into the flats in the packs. I like a light airy mix there, so I might go a little bit more on the germinating and mix that in, and uh, that really works well for us. So again, soil is so critical. You have to get this right. You have to get the right soil. Um, it, it's it, If you don't get that right, and what I mean when you don't get it right, that means you're walking into the big box retailers and buying that garbage there. Don't do it. It's not cheap. It, yeah, a bag of soil might be five bucks. It's not cheap because you're going to be frustrated and you have to have spend spend more money to have good quality soil so that you have good quality plants. And what happens in and I so, showed this to so many people when you have when you you take a good quality plant, you come in, you come into our greenhouses and you you buy this geranium and you pot that geranium into the garbage soil that you got at Wally World, okay? Roll forward two months, three months, whatever, you, you might even be using our good beet and neighbor fertilizer on it, but that plant just, just is sitting idle. It's not really doing anything. And the reason is when you put that plant into the garbage soil, that garbage soil, there's no delivery system. So even if you're fertilizing, that fertilizer, the nutrients can't get to the plant. And I've had, I can't tell you how many times people will walk into the greenhouse and like, Scott, we got this, you know, whatever, this geranium from you a month ago and it's just done nothing. And so first question comes up, what soil are you using? Oh, I got the, you know, that stuff, that big national brand at, you know, the hardware store. And uh, I planted all my flowers with that. And I'm like, skip that you know go throw that garbage on your neighbor's lawn because it's it's no good in here I, and i just i show i take that plant i grab it and i pull it right out like a rabbit out of the hat and just sure as can be it never even rooted into that garbage soil because there was no reason to for it to to root in because there was no nutrients there was nothing for those roots to go find and it just it just stayed uh, you know in that little ball of soil that it had because that's all it had, and of course, so it never grew. So transplanting this into a uh, into a bigger container of garbage soil doesn't do any good. So that's why it's so critical to use a good soil, and uh, uh, you'll have much much better success if you get on board with that. And let us know if you have experience. If you if you've done that, let us know. Comment down below. So. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking about hydrofiber because I think we need to just stop and park it there and talk a little bit about the hydrofiber, how that really changes up the, the whole soil industry. Uh, it, it's something to know about because you have to adjust how you're watering. You have to be a little bit more careful. So again, we're going back to the principle, back to the basics and these principles that are so important. And we talk about them a lot because as greenhouse growers, we know that and we deal with customers that when they get those things in line, they have beautiful plants and flowers. So another thing I, I just want to uh, mention is we have hundreds of how-to videos on our YouTube channel. And this morning I spent some time, so if you go to our, our Sharky's Greenhouses YouTube channel, I made a bunch of playlists. And what you know, there's, I know there's like 265 videos on there right now. So it's, it gets a little overwhelming if you're trying to find a specific video. You have to, we'd have to scroll through 260 plus videos. So what I did is I made playlists and I kind of categorized things. So if you're looking for a video on watering, you can go to that playlist and it has all the watering videos. If you're looking for videos on soil, I made a playlist on soil, uh, indoor plants, uh, let's see, uh, cooking. Yeah, Amy did some cooking videos. Uh, so I made a cooking one, indoor plants, uh, watering, hanging basket care, geranium care. So we made all different categories and then you can click on that and go into all the videos in that. So it just really helps um, put everything into one spot if you're looking for a specific topic. So that's on our YouTube channel. Just look up, go to YouTube, check out our uh, Sharky's Greenhouses or just look up Beat Your Neighbor Fertilizer and you can find all that information there. So thank you. You have a great day. Thanks for watching.